order for the region to achieve faster economic growth and inclusive socioeconomic development. Okay? However, as we all know, this is a daunting challenge for the region given wide disparities in levels of development across the region. Mindanao is where uh, most of the poorest regions in the Philippines are located. Um, we can see that, uh, well, some areas are progressive. However, other areas are still saddled with serious development challenges, right? Including high poverty rates, uh, low levels of literacy, uh, poor infrastructure, Peace and order issues, particularly armed conflict, as well as uh, climate-related issues. Okay. And it is important that uh, we ensure that Mindanao, especially the marginal, marginalized areas, the marginalized groups will not be left behind in the age of the fourth industrial revolution. And so. We are convening this multi-sectoral panel for us to craft some ways forward. Because yung mga pinag-usapin natin kanina, the technologies, the potentials of the fire uh, technologies and innovations, no? they will be useless unless we are able to uh, craft some ways forward, you know? Um, come up with uh, some uh, recommendations, no feasible recommendations, kung papaan natin matutunungan ang Mindanao, particularly the Martian groups. Okay? So, the uh, form of, of this session is open, informal, as well as interactive. So, we'll use the sofa for a change. So, magpapansuhan lang tayo with our uh, uh, panelists. And as I call each of them, I would like to invite them to join me here. No? And then afterwards, uh, we will start with the panel discussion. And last but not the least is 
environment is the uh, director of the Environment Management Bureau of Region 10, Dr. Sabula C. Abu Bakar. Dr. Abu Bakar, are you around? Okay.
because it's supposed that they lead to long-term gains in efficiency and productivity, particularly in transportation, communication costs, uh, and logistics. However, for Philippines, transportation has become more expensive, which has increased the tax, right? <coughs> and inflation has already begun. Okay, of course, who is the big thing? Trump. Trump. You know, in business, if I do bad, no, but I do not blame my competitor. I blame myself. Job that kind of. Communication. Control by two companies. How can you address that? Simple lang, di ba? And uh, I think our president is addressing it. But how come it doesn't get moving? Maybe he cannot hire or appoint the right person. The problem with almost all the leaders, national leader of our country, is that <clears throat> the president do not appoint competent, honest, somebody who has a clear vision to make it work. And that guy should be supported. I don't think we should appoint politicians. If you appoint politicians in the cabinet, guess what happens? They appoint politicians. Politicians are always short term. It's about me, it's not about, it's not about you. That's politician, right? So, I'm not criticizing. I'm only informing you. The difference between criticizing and informing is a world apart. So the next thing, just joking. <clears throat> Automation can replace people. Of course. Uh, where is Elmer? Elmer is done. I will give Elmer an offer. If we can replace half of our sales staff, we'll start with 500. I will pay him one half the salary. If we can replace our logistics, I'll pay him one half of what I spent for my logistics. That's an offer. I hope we can do that. And I'll give him initial capital to build his computer, robotics, and artificial intelligence. Because I'm certain artificial intelligence and robotics they never get tired, they never complain, they do not go to the Department of Labor, and they are not at their labor board. Okay? Uh, uh, the other thing that's going to happen uh, in the uh, fourth industrial revolution is that low skill and low pay will happen, high skill will get high pay. I don't think the government should interfere. But the case of next week is a salary. So what's going to happen? For those low skill who are supposed to be low pay, they will increase the salary because who lang to know for their family? What do you think will happen to our country if you do that? They we cannot grow. That's why uh, we should have a schooling for anyone who run, want to run in politics. Because most of the politicians we have in this country do not know economics at all. He does not understand. So they operate with limited understanding and they think politics is all about I'm not talking about present administration. President Duterte is my friend, so he's not properly. <coughs> um, what else? So what can a businessman like me do? Simple, attend the forum like this so we will learn from you. Connect with the academic. Diba? Attend international conference or the one that you invited to on September 19th. So we will have a better understanding of what the hell is going on. Diba? Uh, but we cannot implement change unless our national leader and local leader has made the legislative branch of our government. It's going to make it work, so we should also involve them. And hoping that uh, they too uh, will learn so they can sing and dance with us. Otherwise, uh, if it's only us, we can advance. So we need the government, the uh, private uh, sector. Uh, the government is executive and the legislative. And of course with the NGOs. And if we all work together sincerely, then I think we'll have a better tomorrow. Okay. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Bengtano. Now, uh, my next question is for our representative of uh, Desta. Yes, uh, well, as we all know, uh, in the age of fire, there will be some, there will be some blocks, but there will be 
also trust the institution. Now, how important is technical education, uh, education and training in uh, in yes, and this uh, fourth industrial revolution? And how receptive are the analysts to Tibet? And what programs are being uh, initiatives? Um, what initiatives of DESCA uh, can you share with us uh, in order to prepare our young people for uh, the demands of uh, Industry 4.0? Um, I prepared something that we presented during the BRCC on okay. Okay. So, um, may I request that it be presented? Uh, first, before I go to the presentation, um, this is the presentation made by our Deputy Director General before the High Official City on the Fourth Industry Revolution. And, um, and with respect to the question on, um, the first question mark is what's the effect of the Fourth Industry Revolution? To the, how important it is to, the, to Tibet? Uh, definitely it has a, a great um, impact on Tibet. But first, allow me to to show this. So for, for TESDA, it responds to, as part of its response to the fourth industry revolution, TESDA intends to do this, um, to have social equity and for global competitiveness and workforce readiness. So this is the thrust of TESDA. So it seems like I'm answering from the back going forward. Can we go to the next slide? So the challenges that are affecting our sector are, there are three challenges that we identified here. <coughs> One is the loss, as we said earlier, the possible loss of jobs, about 18.2 million of uh, Philippine jobs, and 48% of that could be affected by automation. The second challenge is the huge demand for skilled workforce in the next uh, six years, within the framework, within the framework that's prepared by TESDA. And then the third uh, would be addressing the 21.6% poverty rate. So, um, because TESDA addresses not only the industry, but also it, it addresses the problem of poverty in the countryside. So, with this, um, our, our strategy again is that we have to be agile, we have to have uh, the scalability and the flexibility in our programs. To address this, we have the following uh, objectives. Can we go to the next slide, please? And then uh, directions. Next slide. We create, no, right that we create a conducive and enabling environment for the development and, and quality service delivery of the Tibet sector. This means that um, in terms of, because there are two main programs of TESA, the registration of programs and their UFPRAS, we define Tibet program registration employment uh, and um, registration and accreditation system. The second is on the registration of, of workers. So in this case, um, in terms of flexibility, we are now addressing the need for the industry because we are saying that because of um, the changes in the needs of the industry, um, there is a gap between what's been done in school and what is um, needed by the industry. So that's why we are coming up with um, programs so that those in the industry may be able to offer programs already um, in a much easier way than the things uh, and the, the it was, that it was before. Second, um, we prepare the Philippine workforce for the challenges posed by the fourth industrial revolution. Um, notice that in this case, our the the test though would be uh, more concerned about adopting enterprise-based trainings as the dominant mode, and with this eventually. We need more legislations for the apprenticeship program that can be accessed by the different industries. Um, the OJT and the other programs related to um, enterprise-based trainings. Adopt and 
adapt and adopt international standards for Tibet, we are aligning our programs with the Asian Qualification Framework, and then we also adopt skills in its anticipation to identify the fourth industry revolution scale, skills requirement. Next, please. And then the third is to assure industries with high economic and employment growth potentials. Um, they are provided with required quantity of quality workers. <coughs> Next. And directly and more previously address the workforce needs of the basic sector and the disadvantage. Right now, as these are being uh, framed, TESTA is conducting programs for our people who are disadvantaged. We have programs for the Bangun Barawi. We have programs for the formal rebels, for the indigenous people because um, and a lot of studies, a lot of those rebels come from the indigenous people's group. So TESA addresses this program by providing more programs, scholarship programs for this uh, kind of clients. And then the last, if we instill values and integrity in the conduct and delivery of TESA in the whole sector. Uh, the priority sectors that may be affected would include uh, tourism, hotels, restaurants, the construction sector, IPDPO, transportation, communication and storage, manufacturing, health, wellness, agriculture, fisheries, and forestry. So it is in these programs that TESA have a lot of scholarships. And in meeting this, we are preparing the TSD plan for 2017 and 2022. We are asking government for this amount um, in, in, the, in the budget for the next um, how many years? Six years. And for the legislative agenda, next slide. Um, we will be uh, sponsoring for legislative agenda for the establishment of polytechnic institutions the rationalization and harmonization of enterprise-based modalities in apprenticeship, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, alternative schemes of financing Tibet, because um, many of us may not be aware, I think everybody knows, that it's really expensive to run um, a Tibet school. So that's why, and it is, and a lot of our people cannot afford to go into a Tibet school. So, these are our targets for the next 2018 to 2022 that we will be continuing with the different scholarship programs so that these programs can reach as much people. We will have the DWSP, PESPA, and uh, the latest program which is still being um, uh, what you call this, uh, agreed upon between the CHED and uh, TESTA, the Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act. So the the end is that we may be able to increase employment and the certification rate mentioned here is the certification for um, the qualified workers. So, so far these are the things that we would like to get into in Tesla. Now in terms of, end of, and then in terms of um, the response in Mindanao for Many of our scholarship programs are centered in Mindanao, the bulk of them is Region 10, um, being run by our Lanao del North Provincial Office and intended for Marawi. We also have programs in Alano del Sur, and the purpose is so that we can join in the Build, Build, Build program and address the needs of Marawi so that the people there may be able to help build their communities again. Um, in the province where I Come from. One of the challenges, the question is, how do people accept Tibet in, in Mindanao? Because a lot of us think of Tibet as the second choice. And during that forum with the different countries, they were saying, and especially that person from Britain, he said, we should espouse uh, Tibet as the first choice and not the second choice. Because everything that we do, we apply to that. We all have vocations in different, in different magnitude. So, in Mindanao, uh, we have a little problem in um, inspiring people to access Tesla programs for the construction sector. This is the sector where we have, uh, we need more because even um, with, I don't, 
Uh, hindi pa tayo masyado naka-take off from whatever revolution. So, nandito na ang fourth revolution. But in Tesla, we still are in the stage where we develop people to have core competencies, basic competencies. And they are still being needed in the different um, different industries. Particularly sana sa construction sector. Pero a lot of our people do not like to go into the construction sector. That's why this sector is offered by TESA in the modality of STEP, in the Tawag Special Training for Employment Program, so that after the, the skills training, they are given tools so that they can work on, on their own. So, yun ang challenge, um, how do we encourage our people um, so that they will be, um, so, para makaparticipate in, in a greater scale in the real real, real program. So, Talking about the industry revolution and the impact, um, as mentioned in the first challenge, 48% of them might lose their job when things will be automated. However, we go into the second, there are things that still need skills. So, um, Tesla is open to the different industries and enterprises who may be willing to open their own schools, their own programs. Um, in, I, in, in both sides of the spectrum, the highest and the very, very is automation and the very basic one. So Tesla is open to all of those. And uh, as mentioned and told, told to me by my original director, I should mention this, we are open to partnership with our different stakeholders, the industry, the business, uh, and uh, our other um, brothers in the service, brothers in the service, that Ed and Shed, so that together we can to provide better service to our thank you. For an appropriate response to our respected curriculum. 
So now there is a need to develop uh, an interdisciplinary program that is at the interface of several programs. Like for example, mechanical engineering, electronics, informatics, computer science, biology. Because if you try to look at Industry 4.0, it's not only IT. It's a collaboration of the different fields. So that's why we are trying to, uh, to, to, like, to, uh, to develop the mindset of our, of our younger generation to have this kind of, 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 of thinking. Before we have the three R's, the reading, writing, and the was it arithmetic. Now we have we have also to consider the four C's. And what are these? You have made mentioned earlier the, the spirit of collaboration. Communication is very important because you need to articulate your ideas also. Creativity is also important. And the last one is coding. We talk about industry 4.0 is you know this bordering society digitalization. So uh, there is a need to incorporate uh, basic uh, digital basic competencies even in our primary school. And there is also a need to develop specialized courses for the qualification of the fire for industry 